the new Cannondale Motera Neo SL came about after an internal debate about what an e-mountain bike should be. Should it let you whiz up the hills without range anxiety? Or should you be able to throw shapes and flick it around the trail like a mountain bike that uses leg power alone? Does SL stand for super light, slightly lighter, or slightly less good? The folks at Cannondale thought that they could have their cake and eat it, and set about making a bike that would deliver all the torque and battery capacity of a full fat e-bike, but with the handling of a traditional full suspension bike. The Motera Neo SL is the result. All the bikes in the range are 150mm rear travel, 160mm front travel bikes and come with a mullet wheel setup, although a flip chip allows you to run a 29er front and rear if you choose. Weighing in at around 20 kilos for a whole size medium bike, it's still up there near the weight of old alloy DH sleds. But that was fun, even without a motor, right? The Motera Neo SL comes fitted with a Shimano EP8 motor, delivering 85 newton meters of torque. You get a full 601 watt hour battery, but this is Cannondale's own design of battery, complete with dense battery construction that packs more power into each cell and a lightweight liner to keep the weight down. The motor has been tuned to give four modes instead of Shimano's usual three. Each has been designed with a specific use in mind. You get one, the blue indicator light, to make you feel like your legs are riding a cross-country bike on a good day. Two is green, designed for riding with friends on half-fat EMTBs. Three is also green, designed for riding with friends on full-fat EMTBs. And four is yellow, boost for giving it beans. You can use the Shimano E-Steps app to adjust the modes, however, there's currently no way to change the colour between the modes. On the top tube, there is the power button and the LED display to indicate battery charge and assist mode. If you really wanted an extra clean stealth look, you could operate the bike without the extra display screen. The bike comes in two versions of the frame. The Lab 71 is the Formula 1 tricked out version with extra high quality and lightweight carbon construction while the other models share the same but slightly heavier carbon frame. Both versions come equipped with a flex pivot. This is a thin section of carbon, which makes use of carbon's properties to eliminate the need for a pivot bearing. By having the fibers closely packed together, the layup allows the carbon to be both very strong, but also flexible. This technology has been used in other Cannondale bikes for some time, and is now brought to the might of the Motera which is tested and warranted right up to the EEDR World Series level. Both versions of the frame are proportionately sized to give the same ride experience across sizes, what Cannondale calls proportional response geometry. This gives a reach of 44.5 cm on a size medium and 47 cm on a large. The head angle is 62.5 degrees across all sizes and while the actual angle varies, the effective seat tube angle is 77 degrees. Droppers of 170mm length are fitted in sizes medium to XL, although I'm told a 200mm one-up dropper will fit. The frame has room for a bottle, just. It's a little tight to get a full-size bottle in there, and the bike comes with a slightly side-loading cage. If you have a favourite cage you usually like to swap between bikes, don't expect it to necessarily fit here. At the press camp, I was riding the SL1 in European spec. This comes with SRAM Eagle XO Axis T-Type drivetrain, Magura MT7 4 piston brakes, and Cannondale down low dropper. It's a mix of mechanical and electronic that I'm happy with. I found the Magura levers fitted. You can get a few options for Magura brakes quite flat and chunky and had to adjust the reach in more than usual to get them to feel comfortable. This is a very personal preference though, and once adjusted the brakes do have a nice decisive feel to them, giving plenty of confidence that they'll stop you. There's no sensation of flex or marshmallow squish that you can sometimes get with e-bikes versus brakes. However, the USA and UK spec of the SL1 comes with SRAM code silver stealth brakes 
and Maguras are only for the Euro market. The Mosera Neo SL1 comes with a carbon fibre bar and a fairly chunky set of Cannondale grips. Between these and the brake levers, on a longer test, I'd want to spend a little time trying out different bar and grips as I found my hands aching pretty rapidly. The fatigue was definitely more in my hands than in my arms or shoulders, making me think that a bar or grip swap would be likely to address it. The Fox 36 factory fork and Fox Float X factory shock offered plenty of support and wear it a longer test with some time to spend in the workshop, I'd experiment with removing tokens and trying a slightly softer fork setting. As it was, I had no trouble with brake dive or fork flex. The Fox 36 feels an appropriate choice for an e-bike. Coupled with that slack head angle, I had the choice of rolling or dropping steep boulders and steps without any fear of getting caught up or being spat out. I did catch the underside of the motor on a couple of occasions, but there's a big bash plate there for that very situation. I do think that a shorter crank than the 165mm one that comes fitted would be an advantage on this bike. We were riding rocky terrain which had plenty of opportunities to catch pedals on climbs and descents, but I did feel I had rather a lot of pedal strikes. 165mm cranks are perhaps the only component that feels a little out of steps with the times. Many e-bikes these days come with shorter cranks. The tyres are a pleasingly sensible minion and dissector combination with XO plus puncture protection. No need to budget for swapping to something else here. Perhaps anticipating some journo spec bike ragging, the Press Camp Mechanics had fitted a rear tyre insert on our test bikes. Whether it was this or the tyres that did the trick, I couldn't say, but despite our best efforts on boulder fields and rocky descents, there wasn't a single puncture on our test ride. Pretty impressive. How does that 5kg weight saving translate onto the trail? It's certainly noticeable and gives something approaching a natural feel. Leaning the bike feels comfortable and hauling on the brakes or tackling some low speed tech is absent of that oil tanker sensation you get with a heavier e-beast. I found myself being able to pick lines through rock gardens rather than having to steamroller through and hope for the best. Much more like the sort of ride I'd be hoping for from an enduro bike. You'd not be in a hurry to lift it over a fence or style, but it could be done with a bit of sweat or a helping hand. It's light enough that boost does seem largely redundant. On a road climb, it's easy enough to whiz uphill in chilled fashion in trail mode three. On our test ride, we did 19 miles and 3,900 feet of climbing, and I finished with two bars still left to use. I did wonder if reducing the battery size might make sense, but the weight saving would be negligible for the loss of range, so it probably isn't worth it. The bike comes with the same Shimano wine or mosquito buzz that you get elsewhere. But otherwise, the bike was pleasingly quiet and free of annoying rattles or clunks. I think until I can comfortably lift a full fat e-bike over a fence, it's not going to open up the same cheeky world as a standard bike. At 20 kilos, or 19.3 kilos for the tippy top Lab 71 version, it's still a little beyond what my weedy arms can lift that high. However, for now, the Cannondale Motera Neo SL does deliver on Cannondale's aim to build the lightest full power mountain bike ever. We've got one heading our way for a longer test on home trails, so watch this space for a more in-depth review.